Hey there, Diocese of the Rio Grande. Happy 4th of July weekend. This is a quick update just to bring you up to date on the disaster response for the fires in Rio Doso, Alto, and Mescalero, New Mexico, and also to let you know about the continuing disaster response efforts for the Calf Canyon and Mora fires in the northern part of the diocese. So first, let's talk about Rio Doso. These fire responses take place in a series of phases. Phase one was about evacuation and everyone evacuated from Alto, everyone evacuated from Rio Doso, everyone evacuated from Mescalero and Roswell and then moving out into Artesia and even Hobbs and Carlsbad became where people temporarily for about a week to 10 days kind of decamped to. So in the first phase of the disaster recovery when everyone was being evacuated to Roswell, the focus then was trying to meet everybody's immediate needs for a place to stay and food to eat, etc. And that's where St. Andrews did a wonderful thing. The church in Roswell did an amazing job of ratcheting up their pet food feeding ministry. They have a wonderful ministry whereby they help people who need help feeding their pets, particularly people on the street, with pet food. And so the St. Andrews and Roswell ratcheted up that effort to help care for the pets that had been evacuated with their people as they came down to Roswell for that week to 10 days. Now people have moved back. Those whose homes have not been burned to the ground are back in their homes, including some of our clergy and parishioners there. Our church, the Church of the Holy Mount, was not damaged, thanks be to God, because that church, Holy Mount, in Rio Doso, is now helping to feed people who are coming back into the community. And they had a wonderful community supper on Thursday night in order to help feed uh, people uh, who are in need coming back. Speaking of the Church of the Holy Mount, this couldn't have happened at a worse time for them as a congregation. The, the Church of the Holy Mount is in transition. They don't have a permanent rector in place or a priest at the moment. And yet, the lay leadership there has done a fabulous job of keeping the congregation together and keeping the congregation going. In the response to this particular crisis, they have created a discretionary committee that discretionary committee is made up of the senior warden, the junior warden, the co-treasurers, and another vestry member. And they get together on a regular basis in order to help meet the needs of the community by distributing aid and funds, etc. And so that's the group we're going to be working with as we try to get help and aid to the people of Alto and Rio Doso and Mescalero. But there are, of course, people who have lost their homes. As in many of these fires, it is a one is taken, another is left kind of situation where embers from the fire were launched into the air. And if an ember landed on your house, your house may have burned to the ground, even if it was not behind the fire line. And so there are neighborhoods in which one house burned to the ground and the one right next door did not. And so there are people that are unhoused at the moment trying to make those longer term like it may take a year or 18 months to get an, their home rebuilt. That involves insurance claims and all kinds of, of difficulties and hurdles. People may be sort of permanently relocating for a time while their home gets rebuilt. You're also aware, I'm sure, that fire is not the only danger. When the fire burns through, that leaves soil that is not able to hold moisture. And so we had some rains. We were, we were praying for rain. I was praying for rain. The rain helped with the fire, but it also created some flooding situations. Some people's homes were not burned, but they were damaged by floods. And so the recovery from both flood and fire will be unfolding now for the long haul. And this is the moment when the cameras, the news, the coverage moves away, but the crisis is still unfolding and the need is still there. And in fact, I've got a video coming up about the fires that took place in the northern part of our diocese two years ago to talk about that two year recovery, which is still underway in the northern part of our diocese. Because part of what we need to realize is that the need for ongoing support will continue for years after this. And so we are still handling flooding that happened just in the last couple of weeks 
in the northern part of our diocese, in the mountains above Las Vegas, New Mexico, in the Mora area and the Canyon Fire kind of area, there has been new renewed flooding in that part of the world. And uh, Jill Klein and the wonderful people in Las Vegas are continuing to support the ongoing recovery in that part of our diocese. So we are still responding to fire and flood. We are partnering with Episcopal Relief and Development your financial contributions, which are what we need right now. In fact, Deacon Laura Benavides has said, please don't send us more clothes and shoes. We've got plenty of that. What we need right now is funds to help people with housing or rehousing or food. Or the thing about money is it's flexible and the people on the ground can do whatever they need with it. So you can contribute financially by going to the Diocese of the Rio Grande website. I'll put the link right in the in the description below and you can contribute through the diocesan website directly to the fire relief efforts that are going on i want to thank canon jp arosa i want to thank deacon laura benavidez and all the people both in saint andrews in roswell and susan pickett their priest there and all the people in holy mount who are helping to feed people right now we will continue with this effort and keep you up to date Next week, I'm going to be doing my annual spiritual retreat to the Monastery of the Holy Cross. So you won't be hearing from me, but I will be praying for all of you all and we'll keep you up to date as this situation unfolds. God bless you, Diocese of the Rio Grande.